Hey Math One, this is Mr. Roberts at Shasta High School. Today we are in section 3.2.3. This is in chapter 3. The title is How Can I Rewrite the Product? We've been dealing with this over the last couple of days and we're kind of at a point where we're going to wrap this up and summarize it. Um, you have seen how an area model can be used to represent an expression as the sum and a product. So it's the sum of the parts and the product of the uh, length times width. In question 96, we're asked to use the dimensions, the length and width, of the area model at right to write an area in two ways, as a product of the dimensions equal to the area of the sum of the parts. So what we're talking about, by the way, this is one of the ones that I do want you to do. I want you to do 96. And I'm looking for something like, you know, a length times the width equals the sum of the parts. So you know looking at this part of it's going to be the x minus 4 and you can see what the other part is up above. Inside of these cells um, I think most of us have this. If you're struggling make sure you see me during office hours but I think most of us understand that if I want to find for example what goes in this cell I'm looking at the 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 height here and this width or the length and the width and I can see off to the side that this is x so this is an x here times a 2 so this is 2x so we're just multiplying length times width to get the area that goes inside and uh, yeah that's basically it so uh, you know it would be x minus 4 times something equals the sum of the parts. When you do write the sum of the parts, make sure you simplify that expression as much as possible. Down on question 97, I want you to do uh, something similar. And for this one, I'm just going to have you do A. So, yeah, we are doing 97, but I want you to do 97A. I want you to do B. I would like for you to do D uh, and E. Be careful on E. Remember, when you square something, that means you're multiplying it by itself. So that's how you're going to set up the area model. Uh, show the area model, and then show that make sure, uh, pretty much you're going to be writing this, right? And then you're going to write that it equals the other thing. So have just those four things there. In question 98, um, you're asked to, the only one I asked you to do was B of the ones listed there. So you only did B. But I want you to look at B, and B is an example of what we're calling the simplest form of the distributive property. That's what B is, the simplest form of the distributive property. And if you're using this distributive property, right, especially the simplest form, you don't need an area model. So you should very quickly be able to jot down each of these expressed as a product. So for these, we're going to do all of them. I just want to see this written down and then I wanted to see what it equals when I apply the distributive property. So for example on A, if I multiply 2x times 6x this should be 12x squared and then plus 2x times 5 is 10x. So that's what I should see for your answer for A and I would like for you to do B, C, D, and E also. Careful with these negative signs in E. Let's move on to question 99. And this is an important question. It's important that we understand this. So um, what we're essentially asking here is, so I've got two things that I'm multiplying together. If I have the x plus 1 first or the x plus 1 second, do I get the same answer? And I want you to justify your answer using an area model. So if you're looking at an area model and you've got, I don't care if you call this the length and the width, if you set it up one way, right, and then you flip it, you flip length and width, do you get the same answer, right? So I want you to do that and I want you to justify that. Uh, I want you to justify your answer using an area model. In part B it says, um, there are two two problems here and it if you'll notice quick uh, closely one of them's got the 7x plus 1 7x plus 1 and then these other two are super close right it's x minus 1 and then it's 1 minus x it's asking are these equivalent to each other so make sure you again using an area model right justify your answer with an area model set that up and do that for b as well 
And then in C, you're asked to, it says, which expressions below have the same product? So if you did what you should have done in A and B, you should be, there should be shortcuts that you'll notice, ways that you can identify which ones of these are the same. So look at them closely. You might want to spin up a quick call with your classmates and discuss which one of these are the same. But just tell me which ones, which expressions below have the same products when you multiply them out. And then the last thing we're going to do is question 100. Um, you, you will need to copy these into your notes. And what it says is copy each of the area models and fill in the missing dimensions and areas. Then write the entire product as a sum. Be prepared to share your reasoning with the class. So these are kind of puzzles. It may be it may take a little while to get them. I don't want to take away too much, but for example, if I'm told the area here is XY and this is X, I know that this has to be the value Y. Right? So that's that's kind of what's going on. You have to fill in the missing pieces from the information provided and just do that for A, B, C and D. I hope you have a great day. Um, once you're finished with these notes, please post them up to the classroom along with the uh, review and preview for this evening. I'll see you tomorrow.